Good afternoon. We are back here in the Heritage Presbyterian Church kitchen for another episode of Faith and Food. Thank you for joining us. Today I'm going to be making something called feta roast chicken. Now, why did I pick this meal? I picked this meal because this is not only representative of a meal that my wife Lisa and I love to eat, but we do. It's also a meal that's easy to make, it's relatively inexpensive, but it also got me thinking about what it means to have a family meal. Now for you, a family meal might mean getting the family together around the table, around the holiday times, around Christmas, Thanksgiving, you have a big family meal in the restaurant business. And I only worked one summer there, but I've watched some shows about it. I know that family meal is the meal that they have every night before service. Thomas Keller, who owns the French Laundry out in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area, talks about roast chicken being one of his favorite family meals that they eat at that restaurant and other restaurants that he's been at. It's one of those things uh, that's not, like I said, is relatively easy to make, but more than that, family meal in a restaurant is kind of a big deal because it's the calm before the storm. The late Anthony Bourdain talked about family meal and he talked about the chaos, controlled chaos, that is a restaurant on a busy evening where you have cooks and you have uh, dishwashers and you have uh, kind of the beautiful cacophonous symphony of a restaurant at work. But it got me thinking about the importance of sitting everybody down at some point during the day and eating together. And that got me thinking about Jesus and all the meals that he must have eaten with his disciples. We see in John 20, Jesus cooking for his disciples fish on the beach. We know that Jesus breaks bread with disciples on the road to Emmaus, for they knew him in the breaking of bread. But what about all those in-between times? For all the moments in Jesus' life where he is coming into conflict with the Pharisees, uh, with the Roman Empire, with people in his town, with the people he grew up with, I love the idea of Jesus sitting down every day to eat with his disciples. Peter, what do you want for dinner tonight? Well, I don't know. How about some bread and some fish? Okay, let's get started on that. Jesus laughing and eating and enjoying time with his disciples. And what we learn from that, I think, is that at family meal, reconciliation is not only possible, reconciliation is inevitable. So we're going to see you back here in a second, and I'll explain what we're going to be doing tonight, and we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing we have to deal with is our chicken. This is a six pound broiler fryer that you're gonna find in the chicken section of your local grocery store. There are a couple things you wanna to do to trim this up. Uh, this fatty tail, uh, if you've got a good pair of kitchen shears, and I might not, this can come off. Uh, we're gonna take that, yeah, that's gonna be gone. You have some extra fat here. This isn't doing anybody any good, so that's gonna come off uh, as well. Not all the fat's bad. You want some of that in there because fat, uh, we, as we know, equals flavor. The next thing we're going to do, though, I've got this resting on some paper towels, is we are going to dry this. Now, one of the things you can do if you have more time than I've got today is you can actually do a dry brine. A dry brine is where you salt this skin heavily and you would leave this uncovered overnight in the fridge. Uh, you could do four hours, you could do two hours, you could do overnight. The next best thing, if you don't have time to do that, you're in a rush, just make sure that you've got your inside and outside of the bird well padded dry. A dry skin equals crispy skin, and that is what we are going for. So we've got, we've padded our bird dry. What I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna be getting a mixture ready that we're gonna stuff this bird with, I am going to salt this and pepper this now. Got that gone. I'll clean all of that up. And then we are going to salt this, which is here. <laughs> all right. So this is just kosher salt, okay? Large grain kosher salt. This is going to start to draw some of the moisture to the top. We'll pat that dry as well. This is going to salt the bird. We are going to salt outside. We are going to salt inside. Get that up here. Season the inside of the bird from inside and 
out. Don't be shy. It's a big piece of meat. So we're gonna do that. And then pepper, salt and pepper. So if you season once and you want to dry, draw some of the moisture out later with paper towels, then you can pat dry and we season a little bit also. Okay. So we've got that ready to go. We're going to leave that sit and then we're going to make our filling. Okay, so now we're at the part of feta roast chicken. That's my favorite part, the feta. This is not just feta, this is going to be a, a, some lemon zest, it's going to be garlic, it's going to be olive oil, it's going to be some things we're going to stuff under the chicken breast. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take a lemon, we're going to get the stickers off of it, make sure that doesn't end up in there, and then we are going to zest this a whole lemon. Okay? Now, if you've ever used lemon zest before, then you know, if you've ever eaten lemon zest before, then you know, if you want to give something a great punch of citrus flavor, Lemon zest is the way to go. You don't need to use lemon juice. Um, I suppose that you could try orange with this, but I think that lemon really does work well. So I'm just using a, a good old fashioned box grater here. Sometimes, uh, you know, you may have a zester at home. Uh, there's some good ones of those on the internet. So we've got lemon zest here. Okay, so that's the lemon zest. Clean that out. It's there. Then we're going to add our feta. Now I have creamy feta here, eight ounces. We need four of them. So you're just going to take a knife. It comes in a package. It comes in a brine like this. Okay. I'm going to do is take it out. We're just going to cut it in half here with our handy dandy church kitchen knife. Put that in there. Put the rest back into the brine. Dry that off. Now comes the best part. We have some oregano. We do just about a teaspoon and a half of that oregano. We're going to do some crushed red chili flake. Probably my favorite ingredient. Very versatile. Brings a good a good heat and a good flavor to everything that we do. Just a little bit of that. There we go. Kind of going to go on the bird. So we put in, I've eyeballed it a little bit. Uh, some chefs get really good at that. I use a measuring spoon. I put in about a teaspoon and a half of the oregano and, or, or the oregano and a teaspoon, uh, just a little bit more than a teaspoon of the crushed red pepper. You're going to do that uh, to taste though. The next up is garlic. Now garlic is, there's a lot of aficionados out there that will tell you fresh garlic only. I do like using squeezed garlic. It's easy, it's there. Uh, we are going to use one teaspoon equals one clove. So we're doing one and a half teaspoons here just to get some good, good garlic flavor into, into our stuffing here. That's gonna be great. All right. Next thing. You don't need to add salt to this because you have uh, feta already, but we, because the feta has plenty of salt, but we do want to use some fresh cracked pepper, which is over here. Then we take a couple of lugs of good extra virgin olive oil. This is going to be about two tablespoons, two and a half tablespoons of olive oil as much as you need, and then you're gonna take the back of the spoon, right over here, and you're just gonna mash all of this together. You wanna make it into a paste. And that's what we're going for here. I'm gonna finish up here and we'll see you there. All right, so we are ready to stuff our chicken. Now what you're gonna do at home is get a spatula and get under the breast and you just want to gently ease the skin away from the meat. Be very careful not to poke through the skin because then your filling will leak out. We don't want that to happen. Do this. If you want, if you want to get adventurous, you can 
unwrap the legs, but we're not going to do that today. Now that you've got that done, you're just going to take a spoonful at a time of your olive oil feta mixture and you're going to stuff. And then just push down, keep pushing it down. Oh, you want some? Uh, just push this down. But again, this is a little bit messy. You can have the kids help out. You just want to get this down into into the heart of the bird here. Make sure that we now, you can see I made a little bit of a mistake because I seasoned my skin beforehand and I'm getting a lot of it on my thumb, which is not atypical. That's all right. We can re-season as we need there. We are ready to truss now we've got a piece of butcher's twine we're just going to take our legs just dip it under there yep. bring them together like this a couple of knots there this is going to make our bird cook nice and evenly now, what I have here is half a lemon. Take the lemon that we zested, take half a lemon, throw that into the cavity. That's gonna help season that bird from the inside out with some more Mediterranean citrus flavor. Like I said, I've lost some of my seasoning. So I'm gonna re-season this. We're gonna put this into the roaster and then we're gonna throw it in the oven. Okay, we're about to go in the oven here. This is the last most important part of the meal, a good digital probe thermometer. Uh, you can find these at Target, uh, mine is Bluetooth connected to my phone. Uh, it's the iGrow Mini by Weber. I'm not getting paid for that, but I just like it. Um, you want to make sure that when you're cleaning your probe thermometers at home, just wipe them down with a wet paper towel. Don't use soap on them. Don't use hot water on them. That can mess with the temperature uh, gauge. I learned that the hard way. Uh, this is a relatively new probe that I had to replace. My just make sure that you're only on flesh and not hitting any bone. Uh, bone temperature goes up quicker than meat temperature. So you'll end up getting a false uh, high, and then you'll end up eating raw chicken, and you don't want to do that. Okay, so we've got our, we've got our probe thermometer set. We've got our oven at 400 degrees, and we are going to throw this into the oven. All right, so we have our finished bird here. It's reached 160 degrees internal temperature. That's gonna cruise up to about 170. And we are gonna foil this, we're gonna take it home. You do wanna let this rest for about 20 minutes. That allows the juices to get where they need to go and also allow this to get to its finished temperature. If you are cooking a six pound bird like we did, you're gonna be looking at about an hour and a half. If you're cooking a four pound bird, five pound bird, you're gonna be looking at an hour and 10, hour and 20 minutes. I hope that you've enjoyed this, watching this as much as I've enjoyed making this. We're gonna go home, we're gonna have some dinner. God bless.